Hello, and joining us right now is our friend, Lieutenant Colonel Alan West, former congressman from the great state of Florida. Hello, Colonel. Steve, how are you doing? Good. I'm doing fine. Good to talk to you again, as always. Appreciate yeah. it. And, um, I, I, you know, I, you know I, just before you came on, I read a piece that just was put up at the Fox.com, Fox News website, by Dr. Keith Abloh. And it, I, I wish I could read you the whole thing, but basically it's called, Is Obama Locked in a Victim Mentality? And it starts off by saying, President Obama's rhetoric is finally coming closer to what appears to be his psychological truth. Because America victimized him and countless millions of others, any person or party or movement that opposes his views and does not yield to him is not just his adversary, but abusive, predatory, and even threatening to him. And, and I, I mean, how else do you explain his actions and his stances and his name calling and his rhetoric. Well, I can put it in very basic Southern terms: uh, a spoiled brat child, a uh, pathological liar, and someone that pretty much so the United States of America participated in a Pavlovian experiment. We have been giving Barack Obama everything that he has wanted. We gave him a state senator position in Chicago. We gave him a U.S. Senate position. Uh, out of the state of Illinois, uh, unproven, untested, no resume. We gave him the presidency twice. So if you continue to reward bad behavior, uh, you're going to get more of that bad behavior. And, Steve, you can go to any grocery store, and you can see any parent that acquiesced to a screaming, ranting child in the, uh, the cereal aisle, uh, you're going to get that every time you go to that cereal aisle. Yeah, no, uh, absolutely. And, and and you add on to that, and you and I know this, uh, Congressman. I mean, we, we've been through this a million times. Uh, uh, and, and, and you add to all that a man who, um, whatever, you know, the abandonment of his father, as Keith Ablo talks about, and, 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 and everything else, a man who has been raised not by his parents but by his political, uh, uh, you know, believers that surrounded him, uh, mm -hmm. that the, co the Constitution is a flawed document, as he put it, which I think he believes even worse than that. Uh, the country was built on the backs of the poor and the minorities and, and those who were taken advantage. Of. I just don't believe that uh, he views America the way you and I do. So I don't think he minds the hurt that he's putting on, on people unnecessarily right now. No, I don't think so either. There is an animus that is there toward this country. And we must all remember that five days before the election in 2008, he said that we are five days away from fundamentally transforming the United States of America. And shame on the media for not challenging him and asking him, what does that mean? You know, because America is a constitutional republic. What do you want to transform it into? America is a country and a land of opportunity. What do you want to trans transform it into? And I think we're finding that out right now, that he is moving this country away from respecting the Constitution, respecting the three branches of government and their, you know, separation of power, powers and checks and balances to more of an imperial presidency. And, you know, you, you, you just have to look at what just happened with this death gratuity uh, incident and just say, come on, this should have never gotten into the public domain. This should have been taken care of. I don't care what some, you know, you know, snazzy little lawyer said at the Department of Defense, it should have been taken care of. Right. Congressman, every, con every Republican congressman I've heard or that I've talked to said that they believe that when they, be right before the, uh, the uh, closing of the government, when they passed that uh, pay our military bill and keep it running, mm -hmm. they thought that this was naturally included in there. And actually, uh, they had uh, checked with the Department of Defense and they were told that it was, you know, I've I've kind of, you know, done some, you know, vaccines, talking with some folks up there uh, on the Hill myself. And they had every uh, knowledge that everything was squared away and taken care of. But, again, Steve, this should have never come out into the public light. This should have been something that, you know, a simple phone call by uh, Secretary Hagel to his comptroller to say, look, we have discretion with our funds. Let's shift these funds. Or calling over to the to the White House and say, Mr. President, you need to sign an executive order to fix this right now. And no one needs to know that this was ever right. Right. And now let me give you another. Let me give you a better one. So the, the House immediately yesterday took it up and fixed it. The Senate today actually passed it. And Jay Carney today said there's no need for that legislation. The president thinks it's a gimmick, this piecemeal stuff. Uh, the Fisher House is taking care of it. So apparently the president's not going to sign it. 
uh, until there's a you know an agreement reached. Could you believe this? So Fisher House will take care of it, and they'll be reimbursed. But to to have a private entity still take care of this and going forward, when all the president has to do is sign what was passed by the House and the Senate, is a disgrace. Well, it's beyond a disgrace. It's an outrage. It's reprehensible. It's disgusting. It's it's despicable. And consider this, Steve. We have gotten to the point where the greatest nation in the world, the greatest military in the world, will not even take care of the the families of fallen warriors, that a private sector entity has to step in and do it. Now, what does that teach you about government? What does that teach you about the American citizen? We don't need to have this big, onerous government if Americans can step up to the plate and fix that which government refuses to do. So really, for me, this is a triumph of the, you know, indomitable American spirit and our benevolence toward, you know, our, our, our fellow American man and woman, and especially the families of our fallen, that uh, we don't need the government to do it. We'll, we'll figure it out. We'll find a way. Yeah. And I guarantee you there are many other ways that the American people can, you know, take care of each other instead of having this society of dependency, which is what Barack Obama Absolutely. Wants. We're talking to uh, Colonel Alan West, former congressman from the state of Florida here on the Steve Molesberg Show. Okay, we got about uh, three minutes. Let me ask you, uh, nothing's in writing yet, so we don't know the details, but Boehner and the Republicans said, okay, we'll raise the debt ceiling six weeks, government stays closed, president comes to the table and we talk about budgetary issues, uh, you know, increasing the debt ceiling beyond six weeks and reopening the government, but we'll talk uh, during that six weeks period. Um, I don't know that the president's going to say yes to this, but what do you think of the offer? Uh, I think that it is the, the offering of an olive branch. I believe that the first thing we have to do if we're going to do some, some budgetary fixing, Obamacare has to be a law that applies to everyone in this country. It has to be, if it's to be the law of the land, there cannot be waivers, there cannot be exemptions, there cannot be delays. So we need to fix that. If, you know, in a republic, a law applies to all citizens. That's the first thing. I think the medical device tax needs to be repealed. There have been seven other portions of uh, the Affordable Care Act that the president has signed uh, to repeal. The medical device tax is one. So I believe those are two very important things that the American people can understand has effects on our economy. But when it comes to the debt ceiling, you know, I don't agree with the president who says raising your debt, the debt ceiling does not mean increasing your debt. Isn't that insane? Uh, Isn't that yeah, just insane? Yeah. It's like if you have a credit card limit of, of, of $10,000 and you owe $10,000 and then you, you increase that, the company increases the limit to twenty five, and then you run it up to twenty five. how does that not cost you anything? No, it doesn't cost. According to the president, you only owe 10000 <laughs> So I, I think that we really have to look at the drivers of the debt. We have to look at entitlement reform. We've got to look at our tax policy reform. I believe we should move toward a flat tax. Every economy that's moved toward a flat tax, you've seen growth. That means on the personal income side and the corporate side, capital gains tax, dividends tax, and death tax, we need to start eliminating those things. But I'm most concerned about our monetary policy. Janet Yellen, who just got picked up, uh, well, nominated to be the Federal Reserve Chairman. She's going to continue to print money, and I believe that we have an artificial economy. So those are the type of things that I would look for them to start, uh, you know, saying we got to fix these. We, you know, you want to fundamentally transform something, let's fundamentally transform our economy back to being functional and not non-functional and dependent upon government uh, printing. Congressman, always great to talk to you, sir. Appreciate your time. Thanks so much, Steve, and you take care. You too. Colonel Allen West, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, right here on the Steve Malsberg Show. Yeah, it is a disgrace. It is just such a disgrace that the president will not sign that bill passed by the House yesterday, the Senate today, to fund our military families, even though they'll be taken care of through a private organization. It's, it's, it's disgraceful. All right, when we come back, David Horowitz will join us. The great David Horowitz. Um, not only does he have a series of books coming out, which we'll touch on, but he has a, a program underway now that's good to, uh, that's going after certain liberal hosts on TV and radio on the Steve Malsberg show, Newsmax TV and radio.